Ladies and gentlemen in the Shred Gaming Citicom video, there is a new memory technology in town. While of course there's a lot of excitement at the moment of high bandwidth memory, we have a new one, and this time Intel are of course involved, along with probably one of the other biggest players in the industry, Micron. Now, CPU speeds have improved massively over, you know, since computing really started to debut. Like back in 1971 to now, we have processors that are almost 100,000 times more efficient, and the CPU speed has increased way, like thousands of times more. Unfortunately, even the fastest processors currently struggle in one area, and that is speed of accessing data. That simple, really. The faster you can access data, the less latency, the faster that data can be processed. And we have ridiculously fast PCIe SSDs at the moment, but they are still really, really slow in comparison to what CPUs are, like thousands of times. So even if you go down to paging data, you've got massive delays, which means that oftentimes you've got smaller amounts of DDR3 memory or what have you, and you know it can be a bit of a pain, particularly if you're doing very, very memory um, intensive tasks. So enter 3D Xpoint. So what does 3D Xpoint do? Well, it's going to be a key requirement, to be honest with you, because it's going to address the CPU speed slash memory gap. It's going to have over a thousand times more performance and a considerably more endurance than NAND. It's going to have a hundred, uh, sorry, a thousand times more endurance than NAND, and it's going to have ten times the density of DRAM. That's really cool. Another benefit of this as well is it's non-volatile. Now, what the hell does non-volatile mean, I hear you scream? It basically means that if you were to lose power or the device switches off, what have you, you don't lose the memory, you don't lose the data. So, for example, let's say you've got 8 gigabytes of memory in your system. If you lose power to your system, unless it's gone in hibernation or something like that, you know, you, Windows deloads from memory, it's gone, it's wiped. But with this, it theoretically won't. Now, what does this mean for us as gamers? What does this mean for us as consumers? And what does it mean for us as, well, people into technology? A lot. For decades, the industry has searched for ways to reduce lag time between the processor and data to allow much faster analysis. This is according to Intel's Rob uh, Crook. I was about to say Cook, it's actually Crook. That's C R double O K E. This is new class of non volatile memory achieves this goal and brings new game changing performance to memory and storage solutions. And in fact, Micron's president, Mark Adams, has also said that this new class of volatile memory, non-volatile memory, is a revolutionary technology that allows for quick access to enormous data sets and enables entirely new applications. Now, if you start to look at the actual implications behind this, NAND has been around for some time. In fact, it's almost as old as I am, quite literally just a couple of years difference. It was created in 1989. So, it's just, it's pretty old in computing standards, let's just be honest. As I said, memory technologies as a whole, you know, there have been definitely improvements, but it's still a pain in the buttocks. Now, with 3D technology, uh, sorry, with um, 3D X-Point memory, is that the memory is extremely scalable, which is very important, obviously. We're not 100% certain of all of the details yet. There have been a few, um, a few kind of hints of how it's going to work. Basically, it's got down to the inner workings. It can work on a much more microscopic level. So, it works in a 3D way. This allows each memory cell to be read and written to individually, which is considerably different to NAND. NAND has to erase large blocks of memory cells uh, simultaneously. And this means that we're going to have considerably greater density and considerably better speed. Theoretically, 3DX point can be scaled up, um, which will basically mean eventually we're going to see it uh, shrunk down to 20nm or below. And also they can scale it by simply stacking additional layers. Um, 
theoretically, this should help to keep the memory price low, but what low is, um, I don't know. They are stating that the prices are going to be between, this would be Intel and Micron, they are hinting that it's going to be between the price points of DRAM and NAND, which could be kind of cool, because obviously that would be a benefit. Um, Intel have also indicated that it would connect via PCIe, which means that, you know, it won't necessarily replace the DRAM that you've got in your system. But here's, here's, here's the benefits. We do know that the final product will start coming out at some point next year. They've also, uh, when I say they, once again, Intel and, and Micron, they have said that it's not going to replace DRAM. It's not going to replace NAND. So obviously DRAM, well, I don't need to explain what DRAM is, and it's not going to supplant existing memory technologies. What is cool about this, however, is while you look at systems like even a high-end gaming system, gaming systems now have 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes of RAM for the sake of argument, and you might have that for video editing or for high-end gaming or what have you, it's actually not that much memory. It's a lot of memory, but when you're starting to do really high-end tasks, like for example, uh, a lot of 3D rendering, or you're starting to do things such as artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is not like Hollywood. I mean, I know programmers, quite a few of them, and if you speak to any programmer or you're programming yourself, you know that it's not like an oops, accidentally created an artificial super being which is going to suddenly rule the earth, either one welcomer or terminator overlords. It doesn't work like that. Um, one of the big problems, actually, is performance and hardware. That's not to say that we're not getting closer. Uh, we are. We are getting closer to be able to understand how to produce this level of AI and we are getting better hardware. But at the moment, we're not there yet. Um, and Intel do believe that this memory technology will usher in 8K gaming because it will mean that we can have absolutely massive worlds, seamless worlds, massively reduced loading times, faster performance, a thousand times greater than what NAND is currently able to produce. And it will should theoretically mean that we have games which will look and feel just incredible. I mean, even down, even ignoring things such as machine learning and artificial intelligence, I imagine researchers are probably becoming immensely sexually aroused at the prospects of what this could mean, because it should allow them to produce incredibly detailed models of, for example, scientific models of pretty much anything. It will allow them to model things in a much more realistic ways because the process will no longer have to worry about certain finite amounts of RAM. Theoretically, this should be extremely scalable and obviously there will still be limits, but providing you're using powerful technology, in other words, you're you know, stacking multiple servers on top of another and all of that jazz, it should be incredible. And this will also mean that cloud computing gains even more of an advantage. It's kind of cool. Not going to lie. Kind of cool. Pretty cool. But that doesn't mean that high bandwidth memory and stuff isn't cool. It just means that this is kind of like a piece to a puzzle. It's like all of these technologies. And I know another example. But... If you've not got the, the hardware for it, if you've not got enough CPU performance, you've not, not, not got enough GPU performance, if you've not got enough you know, memory bandwidth, if you don't have enough memory, if you, you know, any weaknesses, you're going to have problems at some point or another. There's, you know, you basically you've got a crash pass bottlenecks. And this, of course, is one of them. So, anyway, I think it's pretty cool stuff, don't you? Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. See you soon. Take care. Bye for now.